Hello, hello, everyone. It is Friday, 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 Friday. Once again, I forgot to arrange my uh, microphone. So let me get this, uh, get this guy in here. How's it sound? Everybody hear me okay? Looks like my levels are pretty decent. I can maybe bump it up just a skosh. Ghost Mike, you don't see me. Oh, well, I should be there. Fry, yay. Sounds good. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All good. Dope. I like that. All right. Welcome. Hey, y'all. Come in. Alexander coming in here before I even start broadcasting. Let me get this out of the shot. There we go. The dulcet tones of Mike. <laughs> As the sound of a delicious bubbly drink. All right. So, oh shoot, here's an extra thing. <laughs> I forgot about something that I got at uh, the pen show. That I definitely want to show. Let me put it together right quick before I, uh, you know, do too much here. Good reception. Yeah, it ought to be. It's inside my house, and I got all the interwebs. No beer? Nah, not today. I, uh, I actually just had some late lunch. That is microwave burrito. Delicious. Uh, but I, uh, I'm just running home from a philosophy conference, so, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna start drinking right now. <laughs> that would be, uh, you know, just booze on an empty stomach. It's not a great, not a great look. Have I turned responsible role model for the youth? Uh, I mean, look, I do my best to not be a monster. Hey, look, it's Mr. Nose. Hi, Nose. Giving it a nice stretch. Good. You gonna come over here? Come on. Come on. No? All right, cool. All right, let's see who we got here. We got uh, Mr. JC John, we got a Brian, we got a Steve, we got a Becky, we got a, 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 a Troy, we got an Alex. Hey, what's up, y'all? Got the Dapper Man, the Evan. Hey, good to see you, man. We got a Steven. What's up, Steven? Howdy. We got an Ola from a DS. We got a Joseph. We got an Ink Guy. We got a Tormod. Tormod Burlin. Awesome name, man. Woo! Greetings unto the nose. Give, give your greetings unto the nose. Right there. <laughs> yeah. YouTube chat just told you to shut up. That's weird. I don't know what that would be about. Hmm. Tommy. Hello, hello. Are you rubbing your face on my coloring cards? The answer is yes. Yes, he is. I now have two. Uh... <laughs> Here, I see these, Mr. Nose. <laughs> I know I'm rocking two Rolodexes. Uh, this one, you can see I've only just started putting inks in. But, uh, you know, gotta do that. Madly making cards. Hey, Anna, welcome. We missed you at Baltimore this week. It would have been fun if you had been there, Anna. And that's all right. We'll see you soon. Hey, Joan, welcome. Oh, just V-Rod. Cool, man, cool. Cool, cool, cool. It was super cool getting to meet you this weekend, uh, V-Rod. Nice to see you, man. All right. So, what's up? Well, I'm uh, just doing support the home team. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. Um, <laughs> geez, nose. <laughs> I, uh, I took my rotor fat and Toshima lighter to a philosophy conference, and I was uh, just, like, helping them set up. They're holding the North Carolina philosophy conference at our place. Your blade friend at B-Whips. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Uh, uh, um, Helen, yes? Good to see ya. Good to see ya. Yes. We need to get, uh, we need to get your knife guy out to the, uh, out to the B-Whips or any other show. They would have made bank. Same here. Go grasshoppers. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so, hey, Alexander. Welcome, welcome. See, thanks to me, I'm now the Stephen is now the proud and happy owner of a diplomat arrow in violet. I mean, look, I maybe don't approve of violet, but that's uh, good. I'm glad that uh, somebody's snapping those up. I, uh, I mean, I just got a new one too. Actually, I got this a couple of weeks ago, I guess, from uh, Penn Chalet. Uh, I almost got two more this weekend, but then, oh, but then I saw the one that's coming out soon. Let me see if I can find it on the interwebs. Um, Shoot, what the hell is it called? They're releasing another Diplomat Arrow. Let's see what they have here. 
You can look on the Anderson sites. They are out of town, however, so I bet they don't have it posted. Let's see. Um, points pins. Wow, I can't type. I've got a bunch of stuff in front of me. I cannot type. There we go. Points pens. That's an NHL. Weird. Uh, maybe it's points of distinction still. There we go. The arrow. Let's see if they have it posted yet. Ah, they don't either. Man, there is a diplomat arrow. Why don't you all find that swirly arrow? See, uh, see if you can find that for me. I didn't have it pulled up, and I probably should have. This swirly arrow looks pretty dope. So, yeah, no, the uh, the arrow is one of my very favorites. I like it a lot. He would clean up, indeed. Indeed. Is it weird to miss people you haven't met? I felt that way viewing the bewhips from the other Washington. Uh, no, it's not that weird. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Goulet has a picture. <coughs> that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it here. High nose. Goodness. Ah, here we go. Boom. That. That is the new arrow. Come on, let's get big. Uh, hmm. Can I make it bigger? Oh, weird. It makes it bigger on both screens. At this finish, and I saw the prototype of this. Thanks, Evan, for cluing me in. Uh, at the B-Whips. These are all going to be different because the way that they do this finish is they uh, put the, 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 the paint, basically, on a liquid medium, and then they dip the pin in it. You can see this done in, uh, ooh, 236. Holy smokes. That's, uh, that's an expensive arrow. I didn't know that, but, uh, yeah, it looks real cool. Um, Kenny had that at the show. Um, but you dip, you take the pin, you like dip it into the, the medium, and then they cover it with a protective coating. But they do that with motorcycle helmets and all kinds of things. It's a very cool process, and that looks that looks sweet. So, yeah. Well, I had a can't resist closeout price. Oh, closeout price. Well, yeah, get it on a closeout price, bro. It's the other one that I'm waiting for, though. Yeah, that uh, I, I've seen I've seen the prototype of the other one too a little bit, but I can't talk about it because it's not out. I feel like I shouldn't talk about it. Thank you for the coverage of the Baltimore show. You're very welcome there. Specifically the panel debate with the pen makers. Yeah, the panel ended up pretty good. I hope that uh, the video and audio was pretty good. Tater tot casserole, you mean a hot dish? Um, but uh, yeah, the makers panel was pretty cool. Uh, I think uh, I found out some things I didn't know about those guys, so that's neat. Which shows am I going to? Um, let's see, next will be Atlanta, and then uh, the Triangle show, and then I'm skipping Chicago, unfortunately. I'm not gonna make it to that one. Um, so, uh, April is, April is, uh, Atlanta, then very early June is Triangle, then, um, uh, I guess nothing until Dallas, and then, uh, which is in, like, late September, and then, oh no, um, <laughs> I forgot about things, um, Triangle, DC, San Francisco, Dallas, that's the rest of the year, so I'm going to a lot of them, I'm skipping a bunch in the summer, uh, we're trying to get my mom a house up here. She's trying to retire up to this area, and so I will probably be gone uh, at least during some part of the portion of the summer because I'm going to help my mom move. She's been living in the same house this lo longer than I've been alive. So, yeah, it is a good-looking pen, right? Super good. You take the blame. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Chicago show is the worst time if you're in any sort of academic calendar. That one, well, you know, it's pretty bad. Um, it's maybe not as bad as San Francisco, which is like right at the after the first week or something. But yeah, I am planning on being in San Francisco, Troy. So maybe we'll be next to each other again. That would be fun. Yeah, San Francisco is cool. It is at a bad time, but you know what are you gonna do? That's the way to go. Um, now Chicago is just uh, for whatever reason that's the one Audrey has off this year. So um, that Franklin Kristoff is going to. But yeah, it's not great. <laughs> They're both at pretty bad times. Beginning of a semester, end of a semester. They're just bookends. In fact, one of them is the beginning of the fall, and the other one is the end of the spring. In fact, it actually literally starts on the last day of classes at UNCG, so that's cool. Hey, JCW, how do you probably see it live, usually at work? Well, I'm glad you got out of work a little bit early. That's always good, man. Welcome, welcome. It's called Mina and Arushi Technique. We'll be trying that out. Oh, cool. Yeah, give it a shot. I've seen some videos on how it's done, and it doesn't seem terribly difficult, but uh, I've never tried it myself, so I don't know, but man. That's a, 
That's a good looking pen. That is a good looking pen. Look at that. Woo! Dang. I will uh, uh, I will do my best to get a hold of one of those for y'all. Uh, <laughs> just to, uh, you know, just to be able to show and uh, maybe do a review of. If there are vendors out there who have one of those burning a hole in their pocket, you let me know. Let's see if the shallot has it here. It's interesting that Goulet got those pictures so early. No, they don't have it yet. I don't think. Let's see. Let's see. Nope. Not yet. That's going to be called the Valute, which is pretty good. Is the Eco T worth it? Yes. In fact, I already had the Eco, and I like the Eco T so much I got a second one. So, yep. Um, Philly actually was perfect for me. For whatever reason, it's right before my semester started, so it was perfect. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the Eco T is great, and it's only like what uh, twenty eight bucks or something. It's pretty good, real good pen. Hat off, taxes got done. Good, good. Uh, enjoy your review on the spoke pen. I was thinking of backing it, but decided to get a platinum three seven seven six instead. That's fair. I mean, they're very different pens. <laughs> they're very different. I actually do have one of those to show off. This is the spoke pen for those of you who didn't see the review yet or just waiting to see me move it around in person. Uh, let's see. Sweet. Let me see some Diplomat. It looks like the Diplomat also has a new lineup of Magnums and Smooth. Yeah, the Magnums do look good. And they're cheap as heck. They're under 20 bucks, I think. Um, I need to... Uh, let's see. There we go. I need to try out the Magnums. I actually don't have one yet. I meant to pick one up at uh, Points Pens and I forgot. So this is the spoke pen. The spoke pen is a uh, sort of standard pen compared to fountain pens. It's got all this like nice aluminum going on. Yep, there's a nose back there for sure. Hey, Jesse, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, the great writers, the diplomats, they are great writers. Um, and it's got this awesome neodymium, neodym, anyway, it's got a very strong magnet in there. Neodymium, I believe. I, I've been trying to say neodymium, but I think it's neodymium with an M. Anyway, whatever. Uh, but I got the uh, the titanium grip section here. That's also the one I backed, which is good. It's got a great feel. It's very sort of tactile. You can see my thumb sort of like skipping along it. It's because it actually catches a little bit. It's real nice. You penabled a few of your friends this week. Good, Braden. Well, <laughs> good, man. You got to do that. Uh, so, yeah. Um... And this clip is actually, looks very thin, but is a very good clip. I mean, if you compare it to, like, this Diplomat Arrow clip, I mean, it's obviously a much skinnier clip, and I was pretty worried about how it would work. But uh, this thing is very, very springy. Like, I have, I have get, put this thing through its paces, and I cannot make it lose form or tightness. This thing is still great. So, yeah, I am, uh, I'm pretty psyched about the spoke pen, honestly. I think it's great. It's going to be a good pen. Um, and I've really enjoyed this one. I've only had it since, like, when did you give it to me? Friday, I guess? <laughs> he was, you know, funny story about that. A thing that happened to me early on Friday at, uh, at the pen show was that my back seized up. I'm just standing still, um, holding a, I've got a, have I tried a Conid? I have tried a Conid, and Conids are real cool. Uh, what insert? Oh, is that for, you mean for the spoke pen? Uh, the spoke pen is built around the, uh, the Uniball Signo DX. Which is, <laughs> here's some of my not fountain pens. I'm equal opportunity pen person, right? Um, yeah, let's see, that's this one. The Signo DX is basically like this guy. But it will also fit the um, regular Signo 207s and uh, inner gels um, and uh, ink joy gels and uh, what else? Yeah, zebra sarasas. And um, what else? Uh, I don't know, several other things. Like, it's, it fits a lot of these refills. Uh, is that the one, the Signo 207? Yep, it'll fit a 207. Or a 307. Or an RT. All those Signos are good. Yep. It's a great, uh, it, those are some of my favorites. So, um, I'm glad that it fits all the ones I like a lot. One of your preferred? Yeah, right on. And the inner gels, which are all really good too. And the paper made ink joy and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, it's good. Um, have I tried a Conid? Yes. Uh, I, uh, I know a guy who goes by 240 car uh, named Kalen who uh, has a, 
ludicrous collection of conids and he brought a whole bunch of them to the b whips pin show this last weekend and so i got to play with a bunch of them and uh oh here we go yeah good there we go there's the kickstarter let's see how they're doing that spoke pin is actually almost uh almost done 25 hours to go is what it says so there you go 25 hours to go they have raised 84,000 almost 85 of their twenty thousand dollar goal so they're doing good um, you have a Signo UM 153. Uh, you know, I don't know. What pin does that usually go into? Um, the UM, I don't. I don't know, man. Tell me what pin it goes in, because I don't remember those things. Um, agreed, Bill. Oh, 207 is really nice. Yep, true. I think the uh, the 207 is better than the 307 for copy paper. The 307 is a great uh, insert, but it's uh, it's real wet and it can bleed through stuff. But yeah, Tommy, tell me what that, uh, that's for you, Jesse. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, uh, I think my dad might be watching. He just sent me some uh, texts on my wrist here. You know, Signo, UM100, DX. All the same size. Oh, well, there you go. You just need Anna Reiner. Anna knows all the things about all the refills. I don't remember the name of them. Suddenly ASMR. Yeah, I don't know about that. Anna with the deets. Gotta love that. Yeah. So, yeah, I think my dad is watching uh, from the Costa Rica. Is this your uh, well appointed desk? What is this? Oh, the Epic Refill Guide. Boom. If y'all have questions about what refills fit in what things and what size things are comparable go to well-appointed desk and look at that refill guide for all the things so there you go there you go um she's uh she's really done a lot of work there so good another text right quick i like that blue pen yeah right on well dad next time you come through i will show you this pen i only got it a couple of days ago so uh, still game for a collab what are you doing for a collab? We're doing some collaboration here. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so that, yeah, that's one thing I got at the uh, the pin show this weekend was this cool spoke. Uh, for me, the color I'm gonna go for. I don't have the ink joy in there. You need to add it in. Yeah, man, get that ink joy. It's real good. Um, Anna does take submissions. If you come up with something new, she will. She will. I'm sure be glad to put that in there. So uh, there you go. Um, what was I going to put up here? There's definitely going to be something. Mm, oh, I'm going to turn off my live view. I don't need that. Anyway. No. So that's one thing I got. Um, the other thing is, well, I got, I, know, I have a, I have a bunch of stuff here. So let's take a look at what I got. Let me switch to the other camera. Blurp. All right. So, um, Brad Dowdy, Brad the Pin Addict Dowdy, was talking about um, this um, real nice Nikaya that he picked up, and he was looking for an ink to go in it, and so we were looking at red inks and this kind of thing, and uh, Van S hooked me up with this cool ink. This is Tasha Aka. Pretty sure I have a sample of this from Anderson Pens, but now I have a bottle of it from Van S. Uh, she was like, yeah, yeah, just, you know, take one of those. So, this, ugh, come on. Brad, I have a fever, Dowdy. Yeah, man, he is sick. He, he avoided the pin show crud, only to be afflicted by the uh, sick kid crud. So this uh, Tasha ink is a real bright red. Boom. Like it is. <laughs> Brad Downey. Yep, that's it. So there you go. This is a uh, super bright red, and I have it here on a card. Like it is. Uh, and so this is a red that has a bunch of gold sheen. It actually reminds me a good bit of, uh, of like, it's somewhere in between Diamine Strawberry and uh, Aurori from uh, Sailor, because it's got a ton, like it's got that strawberry color, but also a ton of gold sheen on there, and it looks real nice in, uh, in uh, you know, smaller fountain pen nibs and that sort of thing. I've got it in uh, this one actually right now. This is a medium. This is a Faber Castell Andoro. Uh, medium and I've got it in there and I was a little bit dubious. I thought this is gonna probably make a bunch of ink crud nib crud But uh, I have seen no evidence of nib crud also no problems with it starting up or whatever 
It's great. So here we go. What'd you miss? Oh, I don't know. A few things probably. And you let your wife try all your pins. The only one she's ever complimented is Ink Joy. Ink Joy's real good. Someone on the stream yesterday that was asking about Vermilion inks. Yeah, yeah. This counts as Vermilion for sure. For sure. And also, it's got it's got real good flow. I haven't tried it on crappy paper much. I had it on some real crappy paper today. And there was just a little bit of a uh, little bit of bleed through and a little bit of uh, spread, but you know nothing egregious. And that paper was extra duty crap. So uh, I think on any kind of reasonable paper, it'll be fine. Uh, then another thing I got was I hit up the right notepads. You need to still dread red because you're always a color for teachers. Yeah, well, I am a teacher, so um, I got a bunch of stuff from right notepads. My buddy Chris, uh, Chris Roth from right notepads is there. This is the pocket ledger. This is a three by six which is a great size. Um, it's got these real heavy covers. I mean, look at that, look at that cover. That craft cover is, uh, that is, that is thick. Uh, let's see if I got anything on here that's, uh, uh, let's see, I can't show that one. This one's good. Yeah, so this is, uh, come on, there we go. I've got some stuff on the inside, but this is all fountain pen mostly. This is like some ballpoint. Um, this is, uh, this paper is really good. I mean, check that out. That's all fountain pen, a little bit of ballpoint. There's a little bit of show through right here, uh, but that was, yeah, that was some pretty heavy ink that I put down. So this stuff wor looks really great. And I do love top, uh, top bound, wire bound notebooks. The binding doesn't get in your way. I mean, if you wanted to, I guess you could write this way, but the, the pageant, the ruling on this is really nice. You've got a double column here and here, stuff in the middle, title column. This is good stuff. And it's all kind of a light green which is a very nice, uh, nice color. 90 GSM, uh, is that what it said? Um, does it say? Doesn't actually say what the, the GSM is. I don't know, unfortunately, but pretty thick. Top bound A plus reporters. Yeah, and this one is, this is a, this is a stout notebook. Like you can definitely write on this one just holding it. I was doing that a lot. Um, as I said, we're trying to get my mom a house up here and I was walking around taking notes on the house in this fun little notebook and uh, it is great. So I am pretty psyched about that. It is dense and it is thick. That is true. Um, the other thing I got was this little guy and I actually haven't even opened this yet. Let me find a letter opener right quick. There you go. This ought to do the job. Uh, sometimes you guys got to open the letter extremely. And these are mini notebooks. I love light green lines. Life pistachio books are one of your favorites for that reason. Yeah, I get it. I get it. These are pocket flip books. Um, and these are, I think, going out of production. I got these from uh, Points Pens. So if you want some of these, maybe you know, hurry over there. These are six flip books, each 120 pages, perforated blank paper. Uh, Ten bucks for all of those. Uh, or no, I guess it's 120 probably, 120 probably total, 60 pages each. Maybe I don't know how they're counting, uh, but these are just little flip books with a perforation at the top. And it's the same kind of paper, nice and smooth. It's blank. These are great to hold in your pocket because they, uh, you know, they don't get in the way, but it's really good. Yeah. This is a, this counts as a knife. <laughs> it's a, this is a cold steel, steel Vaquero. They don't make this thing anymore. This is one of the ones that they would show like Actually, I'm getting a little bit of rust. I need to get out my, my rust uh, rust cleaner and stuff, but um, it's pretty awesome. Start off with the result of scrap cuts. Yeah, that sounds familiar. He said it's kind of a pain in the ass to bind and stuff, so I think they're going to not do these for a little while. So uh, if you want to get some of these, some of these totally different notebooks, which is all letter pressed in. It's very nice. They don't have the heavy covers of the, uh, the reporter notebook or anything like that, but um, these are actually really good. I have... Hmm... Somewhere, I have a few pages probably left in the little white one that he gave me in DC a while back. Uh, but I liked it so much, I kind of hoarded it. But now I've got a whole bunch of them. I should have just brought more, bought more packs because these are great. So check these out. Um, the other thing I got from them is this. So this is a, uh, a notepad sort of thing on the order of the, uh, the Mastermind. This is the Baron Fig Mastermind, which is a little bit bigger. There you go. Show it this way. It's a little bit bigger, um, but uh, isn't bound. A thing I like about this, um, the right notepads one, is that it is actually bound across the top, and uh, it uh, so you don't have to like just throw the pages away or whatever. You just flip to the next one. You can definitely use both sides. Um, these Baron Fig ones are actually only 
printed on one side. These are just uh, reviews and stuff that I have upcoming. Look at all them things. I can actually check something off. Boundary errant. Done. There, accomplished. Anything else? Mm, I got a few of these that are actually almost written. Uh, so it needs to be needs to be done. But anyway, um, I like the I like this uh, this mastermind pretty well, but I really like write notepads. I think they do good work. If you don't are not familiar with write notepads, it's uh, basically um, my uh, my buddy Chris Roth and uh, his family that have been running this book bindery for generations or some such, and uh, so they do this stuff all on their own. Uh, I haven't actually opened this one up either, so. Deploy the mighty knife. Let's see if I can get underneath a seam here so I don't cut anything. Including my hands off, because this is a serious knife. I mean, look at those serrations, man. Uh, it's This is actually made to cut like cordage and all kinds of stuff. You hit it here and then just drag it through and it drags along the whole edge. It's a good knife, but also good for opening uh, thin plastic. Really cleaned up on right notepads? Yeah, I mean, you know... I, I, uh, I mean, I've gone a little spending spree. <laughs> so, where do you get them? Go to writenotepads.com or write pads. Let me make sure I'm telling you the right thing. It's writepads.com. Come on. Let's load. Wait. Ah. Uh. There we go. <laughs> it hadn't loaded. I interrupted it. Uh, yeah. So writepads.com is the uh, is the website, and they got all kinds of good stuff. Reporter notebooks, eleven ninety nine. What did I pay? I think I might have paid more than that. Oh no, a little bit less. Might be a slightly different reporter notebook. But uh, yep, there you go. And a cool thing that WritePads does is when you buy one of their notebooks, they uh, they donate a notebook to a school in need. So, pretty great. Glad you didn't use a, use a katana as an opener. I don't have a katana <laughs> or a katana. Uh, but they, uh, they do all kinds of good stuff for uh, the community and Baltimore and all that jazz. Uh, and they're just like, they're good people. So, you know, worth supporting uh, if you ask me. Geez, that blade is unnecessary. Yeah, it is. It could have been the K bar. I mean, I got that down here, down here too. If we need to open up something else, but uh, all right. So back to the desk focus. So this uh, this thing is ten by seven, which is kind of a perfect size. It's a little bit smaller than the um, uh, than the, uh, the the mastermind. Corinne works there now. Where? She works at Write Pads. I didn't know that. That's cool. I do kind stable books too? Uh, maybe. Say right is way better than Baron Fig. I agree. Uh, I I agree. You know the book bending class? Cool. Mike throws all his money at Chris. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> well, some at Chris. Uh, I got this from Chris, and I got um, the uh, the reporter notebook, the uh, pocket ledger thing, and this guy from uh, Points Pens. Uh, but this is brand new. They've also got these in planners. I didn't go for the planners. Just I don't know. I was gonna try this off. I should have gotten a planner. Is what I'm thinking. But this is about twenty bucks. Um, I think is what it was said. Let me see if I can find it here. This is the pistachio. This is 22 bucks. Uh, you can get a, um, a weekly planner as well if you like. But uh, they have them in craft covers, which they were sold out of. They have them in, uh, actually it looks, it doesn't look quite look pistachio. Let me ad adjust my adjust my settings right quick. I've got my settings adjusted for all kinds of different colors and stuff here. Let's see, uh, white balance is probably what's up. Yeah, that's better. Oh, too blue. Anyway, it's kind of a light green, uh, which is not really coming through super well here, but what are you going to do? Uh, inside here, you have uh, 120 pages of uh, same kind of thick paper. You have the light green lines. Uh, and then, uh, you know, kind of stick that in front of your keyboard. That can be your notes and stuff. So, yeah, good stuff, man. Good stuff. Here for Social Enterprise, indeed. 10.7 is comp book size, good size. Yeah, I believe that. This is a heck of a lot better than a comp book, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I see a comp book. I don't know. I think this is bigger than a comp book. I think a comp book is probably like this, but I haven't had one of those in a while. Composition books are usually kind of crap, so I haven't gotten one in a while. All right, so 
There's your right notepads swag. I'll have reviews on those in the near-ish future, uh, especially since some of these things from right notepads tend to come and go. I've got a bunch of right pad, uh, right notepads from them that have uh, <laughs> been discontinued. So uh, somewhere between A4 and A5. Yeah, it's in between A4 and A5. That seems right to me. Oh, Audrey's on her way home. That's good. She's coming home early. All right. The other things I got are um, they come in uh, they come in these sleeves, right here. There we are. Got a Rodia A3 two pack. That's uh, that's a lot of paper there, for sure. Uh, they come in these sleeves. You might recognize these sleeves as being from Jonathan Brooks. Um, I hit the Jonathan Brooks table pretty early, uh, as soon as I could like get up and my back wasn't trying to kill me, because I heard it while uh, standing still. That's the thing that happens when you're old. But I'm fine now. But yep, some a couple of Brooks things incoming. And I brought both of these over to Audrey. And I was like, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to get both of these pens. And then she immediately went, I claim that one. <laughs> so uh, there are ink samples in your mailbox? That's fun, Becky. All right, so the first one is this one. This is, uh, these are, I believe, the Charleston uh, pen. These are all handmade by Carolina Pen Company. But this, uh, this, looks, this looks real cool. This is actually the first one that jumped out to me. Uh, it looks like that modeling clay stuff that you might get, or like if you melted a bunch of crayons together, uh, or like just mooshed some Play-Doh together. But I love the look of this thing. It is, I mean, it's a lot like that new Diplomat Arrow that's coming out, right? It's all swirly lines and stuff. Uh, but of course, this is solid, uh, solid color acrylic, and uh, I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, the combo is pretty striking, right? Just, uh, just awesome. And he filled it up with his Carolina Blue. He had uh, he only had that ink at the table. He said, I'm going to fill it up for you. You got your choice of Carolina Blue or Carolina Blue. So I have this in a broad. Um, a lot of people tend to agonize over what nib to get next. Um, I have a couple of advantages in that, in that scenario. I have a lot of number six nibs that will fit this. And uh, my wife is Audrey, the, um, the nib worker over at Franklin Kristoff. So I can... Like, if I don't like the nib or I want something done with it, she is a, a kind of a wizardess, a sorceress. She's a, ni a nib sorceress. Uh, this is a broad on this one. <laughs> Christopher Starr here got, uh, got auto-modded by saying it's badass. It is. I'm large. Wow, this is. Wait, you see my face on it. It's huge. Yeah, it's a Lumalite for sure. All right, here's the next one, and that's this. Uh, don't correct your TV. That's probably about the right color. Is Audrey not a Nib Meister yet? I actually, I don't know what it takes to be a Nib Meister. Uh, I'm not going to pass judgment. I don't, I don't really know. Uh, this is the second one. And this is actually the one that Audrey said, I have to have this. Um, this is sort of a bronze Illumilite. She's a member of the Nibinati. That's definitely true. <laughs> I'll take that for sure. Nib Doctor. She is literally a Nib Doctor. Um, yeah, so this is a bronze Illumilite with like teal or turquoise uh, inclusions in there uh, but it is gorgeous uh, Joseph who was here in the chat has a really nice she it through the Meister with ease yeah maybe so <coughs> she has an actual she has a PhD there was somebody that came up to her at the table and was like uh, when kicked out of the pen roll yeah right uh, who came up and was like hey so what's this nib doctor stuff like what's the joke she's like it's not a joke I have a PhD in molecular microbiology <laughs> Which always makes me laugh because people are like, oh, she does nibs. She probably doesn't have a PhD. Totally does. Very, very smart. She is, uh, I'm married up. Let me tell you that. So yeah, this is Audrey's pen. This one I think has a medium nib on it, but I said, I don't know. Give me a broad and a medium because you can't go wrong with those. Presume she will be a qualif qualified nib mistress. Uh, I don't know. I think she's past that, but um, Audrey is very good at nibs. If you have had her uh, do nibs for you at a pen show or... Um, or at, uh, or if you like order stuff from Franklin Kristoff, that's pretty much that's all Audrey, and uh, she's uh, she's real good, super super good. So uh, let's see, what does Audrey can say that? Yeah, she's a, dig a nib doctor. She actually does have a lab coat. I've been trying to convince her to wear a lab coat. It is a black lab coat, so I don't think Scott would be upset about that. He does like his black uh, black black theme at the table. Um, oh, I forgot. I've got this uh, this reporter, this pocket ledger, has a little rubber band that goes around it and says that. Yeah, number six, SIG and fine in Atlanta. Well, it'll be there. Um, I think I'm actually working at the table at Franklin Kristoff in Atlanta. Um, 
which uh, I haven't worked before, but uh, I think I'm on the schedule for that, so I will see y'all there for sure. But uh, Audrey's pen is nice. Yeah, it is. It's a, that is, that is beautiful. Look how bright that is. In the, I've got a big bright light over here, as you can see from the glare on my face. But uh, look at that. Super hot. I mean, it's gorgeous. I was, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I'll totally see you there. I'll be there. And that's the other one. So, yeah, no, these are both uh, both gorgeous pens, just in very different ways. All right, one more pen. One more. And this is one that I actually didn't even, I didn't even notice until the end of the show. Um, so there's a guy that goes to some of these shows whose name is Pierre. Maybe you know Pierre. He is the guy behind Desiderata Pens. Um, when will I pressure FC to make a piston filler? I ain't going to do that. You want to pressure uh, FC to make a piston filler, you send Scott an email. <laughs> We have a paint stained white one but the audrey nib doctor thing is far better it's hot and stuffy at dc oh it does for sure um there is a guy named pendleton brown who wears a like a lab coat that's just splattered in ink which is cool but he doesn't do shows anymore he's doesn't have the time double broad sig that you have is fantastic oh you got one of those good yeah i've got one too and i love it um she is she's good um so uh anyway pierre of desiderata pens when i think of pierre and desiderata pens what I think of are hard hard rubber pens, so black hard rubber, usually fairly, fairly skinny, and uh, usually he uses like a zebra G nib in there. So you get a lot of flex, but you have to replace your nib because it rusts and wears out and you gotta, you gotta trash it. Um, I love Pierre too, he's great. So if you wanna see Pierre at a pen show, you can't miss him. He's like a, he's like a, he's probably almost as big as Phil, right? I mean, he's probably 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. anyway. He's a big dude, so just a big black dude with a shaved head wearing overalls he is great um absolutely awesome job on your model 66 fc extra fine sig at philly good i'm glad you like it i'll uh, i'll tell i'll tell uh, audrey that uh, you said so anyway so that's what i associate with desiderata and so um way thicker than phil uh, he would break phil in half like crunch um but he's he's awesome got a lab apron in this black she can borrow nice <laughs> um so that's what I think of with him. And I, I like him a lot, but, you know, I, I kind of wandered by his table. I noticed he had some acrylics, but I didn't really slow down and look at the pens. I was just talking with Phil or whoever sitting at his table or just something. I kind of kept moving. And uh, so at the very end of the show, I stopped and I looked. I was like, tell me about these pens, man, because this doesn't look like your normal situation. <coughs> so, uh, but Pierre wouldn't. Pierre's a sweetie. Uh, but... Uh, so he let me borrow this to bring home. I'm gonna switch over to the other camera so that I can uh, show it to you in like closer detail. But this is of a new line of Desiderata pens. I didn't catch a name, unfortunately. But uh, it's all swirly acrylics. Uh, and he makes uh, everything here except for the nib, basically. So, scooch. This is that pen. The clip is sort of a... Uh, uh, sort of a, a metal pole. <laughs> it's interesting. Skinny, thin, uh, very functional. It's got a nice uh, lip here, good ramp. It's got a good amount of bend, but it's not going to be like the spoke pen. Like this one, uh, you're not going to bend all the way out here, but it's definitely going to hold on to something real tight. It has a uh, very nice uh, set of threads there. It doesn't take too many turns to open. Easy enough. He's about 6'5". Yeah, I'd say at least 6'5"-ish. You're what, six, uh, six, seven there, Phil? Sergeant Stretch. Uh, so, let's see. If I take this out here, um, you'll see a couple of things. I'm going to unscrew this uh, nib unit. He likes his pens to have a lot of flow, and he's got a, uni uh, a custom-built filling system. So, I'm not going to take the, I'm not going to pull the feed out, but. He has actually drilled the feed out and added a breathing tube. So he's put in, he's put in some drill time on every single little feed, which seems very tedious to me, but uh, he loves the engineering stuff. It's really interesting when you go to shows and you get to see that what the makers are really into. So you've got like, um, you've got like uh, Jonathan Brooks, who's real into uh, the materials that he's using and creating the new materials. And you've got Ryan Krusak, who uses all natural materials, but is like, he's an artist with that material. Like, I mean... Ryan Krusak's uh, wooden pens are gorgeous. Just awesome stuff. But he's not building filling systems. Then you have Pierre, who's real into the mechanics and the engineering of the thing. So this 
is like a, like a plunger filler. And he's made all this stuff. It's an ebonite plunger filler. Ebonite here, ebonite here. Uh, custom made uh, uh, stainless steel post here. Uh, he gets a custom spring. What are we looking at here, Becky? I will trust you. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, here we are. Oh, is that what it's called? The Sober K. Put, oh, Fly Girl Elliot. Man, it was really fun hanging out with Fly Girl Elliot, too. I, I almost never see Lauren at shows, but she is great. Sober K from Pierre is no exception. Yeah, so I didn't do the Z nib. Uh, because I'm frankly just kind of crap at this kind of writing, uh, and so I wouldn't be able to show it off. So I got a regular old nib. Um, it's a, he uses uh, either Zebra G's with a custom-made, like he makes them himself, Ebonite hard rubber feed, or um, the thing I have, which is a Yovo number 6 nib unit, which is pretty, uh, pretty um, uh, uh, ubiquitous is what I'm going for. So it's like the Twisby Go. Yeah, it's kind of like a Twisby Go, except he makes the darn thing. This is a really nice, really nice filling system. You can see the piston working inside there through the barrel. So I'm going to, I actually haven't filled this pin yet. Um, I was cleaning it out and uh, letting it dry, but uh, I'll get to, I'll get to using this here in a little while. And then I'll, um, you know, I'll do a re little review on it for you. But um, this is definitely worth checking out. He's got a bunch of different materials and stuff he's been using. Uh, you can get that Zebra G nib, which gives you all kinds of flex, uh, but you do have to replace it every once in a while. So, uh, yeah, this is the uh, Desiderata Sober K. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I'm trying to. But, yeah, it is boing. It is a lot of boing there. Um, he also makes one without a spring. That's just a straight-up uh, plunger. Uh, he's been making pens out of wood. Hey, cut it out. Cats are doing annoying things. Um, let's see. Let me go back to the scene here. There we go. Uh, pricing, you know what? I actually don't remember. Let me look. Um, let's see. Does it have a pin company? Shop now. <laughs> you know the kids? Yeah, yeah. How much did it run me? Um, I actually didn't buy it. I'm just borrowing this one. Um, I'll give it back to him. So I don't remember. Um, it doesn't look like he actually has this one on his site now that I'm looking. So here's, uh, here's the site. That needs to be tough sometimes. I'm yelling at the cats, man. Yeah, 250 could be. Um, nah, probably less than I guess because the, uh, the ebonite, full ebonite ones are 225. So those are probably more expensive than the than the, uh, the resin ones. So I, I don't really know. Ebonite second. Yeah, so these, the Daedalus and the, the Icarus, are the ones that I, I think of when I think of Desiderata. So thin, hard rubber, Zebra G. He's also got some in Eucalyptus Burls. <laughs> the BAMF. Oh, 150. That's actually not bad. This might be it's a pre-order. Ooh. Ooh, that is a... Yeah, nice. So this is looks like the same kind of thing, but with sort of a machined ebonite looking feel there. So, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Anyway, so that's 150. So I think his pins are really reasonably priced, especially since he's making the, the filling system. Like nobody makes filling systems really, at least not you know, individually by hand. So, yeah, somewhere in there probably. I uh, I gotta ask him what it costs before I do a review, but but uh, not not super high. Zero, that would be replaceable number five or number six nib. Um, you, I think you, uh, you can, uh, if you were going to do that, I would say get the number six Yovo set up, um, and then you can replace it with the number six nib. The G nibs actually are, he does them custom, and he makes the feed, and he like hand makes the feeds. So, um, I, I don't know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't do that. I, I, talk to him. Because he's got a good FAQ on his site uh, with all kinds of all kinds of questions, uh, which is fun. But uh, you know, check that out. Yeah, but yeah, get the if you're gonna go for the number if you're gonna go for a number six nib, just get the Yovo set up instead of the Zebra G. Uh, the Zebra Gs are steel, and so they will, but they're not they're not stainless. They're like 
you know, they will rust and degrade. So, you know. Twisby Go in really purdy. Yeah, it's like a Twisby Go, except it's not hideous. <laughs> uh, I don't have a Twisby Go here to show, actually. That one's at school. Uh, actually, my Zebra Go is living currently in my uh, Pinwell. My modern Pinwell. That is a very modern looking thing. So, uh, there you go. There you go. So yeah, that's what I. Uh, those are the things that I scrounged at uh, at um, BWI. They make titanium zebras. Weird. That seems that seems strange. Evan says, "Did you get a look at the Kara's Vertex at the show?" I saw the Vertex. Um, I don't know, when was the first time I saw a Vertex? It was a while back. I think they were in D.C. last year they had those. So, um, you got a Titanium Zebra, huh? Is it is it good? Like, it wouldn't degrade, I guess, but Titanium is weird for flex. Anyway, um, yeah, they had those, and I think, the, I think the Vertex is pretty good. It's a cool pen. Shares the same kind of uh, size and shape, I think, as the Franklin Kristoff uh, Pocket 66. Um, it's got the... Uh, the red dragon sort of dip in the top, the divot, but I think they've only had them at those two shows. Yeah, they had them at San Fran, they had them at DC, and they had a few at this pen show. I think they're pretty cool. I don't have one, but I think they're pretty cool. So, yeah, so far it's fine. You haven't broken it yet, huh? Yeah, the thing I hear about titanium is it doesn't really remember well where it's supposed to be, so they're paying the ass to adjust, but uh, I don't know, I haven't tried. I actually don't have any titanium nibs. So. So that is that. Talked to Bill about the nibs. He said the laser edge steel nibs like the titanium ones are coming after are coming after they deplete their current steel nib stock. All right. Cool. And more vertex colors coming online. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. They should definitely make some more of those. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what their pricing is like on the Vertex, but um, seems all right. Seems all right. Whew. So yeah, that was my uh, that was my haul, y'all. Um, and you'll be seeing reviews for a lot of those things coming up soon. One twenty, yeah. So it's right in the same price range as the uh, as the Pocket sixty six from FC as well. So, yep. If you like that size, you like that price range and that sort of thing, it's pretty good. So it's got a it's got a, a a snap cap instead of a twist on, right? Random question. I love random question. Give me some of them. Name some people, vendors, and events you wanted a fantasy pen show. I uh, I don't know, man. I mean, uh, Red Dragon. I gotta get Red Dragon, man. Gotta get that Red Dragon. Of course, that guy who runs Red Dragon. I don't know what he's up to, but he needs to make more pens. Um, if you get the chance to get a Red Dragon pen, go for it. Uh, that guy makes real good pens. Yeah, get some of the... I'd say get some of the vendors that we only know online. Um, I got to meet uh, the owner of Pin Boutique this last weekend. That was fun. She was very nice. Um, I don't know. So I go to I go to pin shows for people. I know Brad says that a bunch of times. Uh, and he's right about that. We 100% agree about what's good about pin shows. And it is the people at pin shows. So like, I really... I hung out with the folks from Coles of London who uh, rep Visconti. And I really like them. Uh, they are good folk. Uh, the Kazma person. Yeah. A free Nakaya booth. Yeah, I want to see some Nakaya. I want Sailor to show up with their crazy nib stuff. I think that's dope. Um, as far as events and such, I don't really know. Um, I actually... Here's an admission. I've never... I've actually never been to a class at a pin show. I just haven't. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because I've been using pins for like a very long time um pin show karaoke that'd be dope have you ever enjoyed an ink enough to get a second bottle of it yeah i have um i'll come back to that in a sec um i want to see uh, i want to see conid at a show they need to come to a show uh la crumb de, uh, crumb de crumb de? yeah they uh <laughs> they need to uh they need to you know get some stock because i think don't they usually sell stuff and then get the stock in yeah, I want every weird Japanese vendor that has, like, custom Sailor and Platinum stuff, I want them to show up. Uh, that's, you know. And, of course, in addition to the usual suspects, like the uh, the Andersons and the Van Ness and the Franklin Kristoffs and the uh, Red Dragons 
and uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I'll say. So, have I ever enjoyed an ink enough to get a second bottle? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely Penwell. I want small makers. I want light bringer designs for um, for uh, uh, wax seals. Uh, I want the wax seal company for wax seals to bring all their weird stuff. Um, I want Papier Plume at more shows. Uh, I want the the thing that I've been focusing mostly on in my like pen buying and my hard, hardcore pen shopping are small makers. So people like Troy here in the chat um, with uh, uh, Brute Force, uh, people like Ryan Krusak, people that are and like Pierre who are like doing cool stuff and making their own thing. Because um, like, look, I love pilots. I mean, I've got some great pilots. I really love my sailors. I love my platinums and stuff, but most of the stuff when I go shopping for pens, I'm shopping for like small maker stuff or stuff like, you know, bring Kenro and have them bring all their crazy stuff. Like bring out the stuff that people want to see, you know, that kind of thing. Let it hit more shows to have local vendors like the BWI chocolate person. Um, yeah, uh, like I like that guy. That guy seemed very nice. I talked to him a little bit. Um, I think I like Chef Brandon's chocolate a little bit more. So we'll have... Um, We'll have uh, Chef Brandon at the Atlanta show if all goes well. So we might have more than one chocolate person. That'd be crazy. How much is a small table at a show? Um, like 100, 125 bucks. I think it's usually, it's a little bit more usually for around the walls, but a single table is like 100 bucks or something. They're not terribly expensive. So the expensive bit about pin shows is uh, travel and lodging. So if you're coming from far away, you got to stay somewhere and you got to get there. Um, but the rest of it isn't that bad. BWI chocolate guy had only dark chocolate stuff. Yeah, that's true. Um, yep. I tried a little bit of it. It seemed fine. I'm not a big chocolate guy. So I, uh, you know, usually tables start at 150. Okay. All right. All right. So 150. Still not bad. Still not bad. Jesse would know more than me. She's been a vendor. I just like take a look at the thing every once in a while. It depends on the show. It can be well over 200 for an interior table. Really? Who's charging that much? Woo. Woo. But whatever. That's for a weekend. That's for like three days. You can make that up at a pen show if you're selling uh, selling goods. But it's not terrible. Especially not compared to other kinds of shows. <laughs> I was talking to a, to a vendor guy. Oh, LA. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, San Francisco and D.C., more expensive. Yeah, I, I believe it. I mean, it's more expensive just to have the damn ballroom. What about dates stuffed with chocolate? Mm. Sleep under the table to save money. Uh, you, security might run you out. Or else maybe you just have to be security. That's what Ren does. I think he just sleeps in the ballroom. <laughs> so Ren, by the way, is the little guy with the uh, cowboy hat who is uh, at a lot of pen shows. They kick you out of the ballroom out of the show. Yep, that's true. That's why I say you gotta be uh, you gotta be the security. Yeah, I think they pay Ren in uh, Netflix and uh, booze. So, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, um, yeah. So uh, inks that I've liked enough to get a second bottle. Yes, there are several of the sailor inks I liked enough to get a second bottle. Like like the Ricky Chaws and those kinds of things. I got a couple of bottles of that. Um, I've got a couple of bottles of some of the Lamy limited editions. Like I got a couple of bottles of uh, dark violet or uh, dark lilac, a couple of bottles of petrol, you know, those kind of things. Um, Private reserves earlier on, I uh, got a bunch of them. Um, like uh, I'm, I've gone through two or three bottles of Lake Placid Blue. I love that blue. I've gone through a few bottles of that over the years. Um, not to be confused with the organizer in Chicago. Yeah, no, that guy's way taller. Uh, what pizza will it be tonight? I don't know. We actually had pizza just a couple of days ago, so maybe we do something else tonight. Uh, we'll have to see what Audrey says. Got a second bottle of Douyu. Yep, Douyu is great. Hi, Clipsy. How you doing? What's going on down there? You want to come up here? You do? Are you sure? Okay. There we go. We actually had tacos last night, Braden. <laughs> Never have too many tacos. There we go. This is a Clipsy Cat tail. Yep. Those are always the answer. Tacos are at least one of the answers for sure. There we go. This is a Clipsy Cat right there. <laughs> also, by the way, thanks to all of you who um, ordered my stickers or who bought them at the show. Uh, a green salad to help recover from the microwave burrito. I mean, eh, 
I, my gray burritos are pretty good. I like them. I, I, I eat like a trash person. Uh, but thanks very much for those of you who, like, wanted my silly face on a sticker. I have one hashtag Team Mike sticker left. I might have to make more. Because uh, it turns out that people, for some reason, want to put my face on things, which is hilarious to me. Um, Chris Roth. Let me find this picture right quick. Um, Chris Roth actually put my face on the back of his phone. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's Pierre. Right there. That, that guy. Looking for Desiderata? Look for a 6-5, that guy. Will I be at Arkansas? No, I won't be at Arkansas. Uh, let's see. Where is... Uh, where is it? Ah, here it is. That's the picture. That's Chris Roth of Right Pads. With my face on the back of his phone. Yep. Good times. Anyway. Oh, do you? That's right. That's right. Oh, are you? No, Pierre has always worn overalls as long as I've known him. Uh, and I've known him for several years. And he's always worn the overalls. And I asked him about... <laughs> Clipsy just drooled on my notepads. Clipsy. This cat is a drooler. When she's very happy, she purrs very hard and she drools. How many pairs of overalls does he own? I don't know. Maybe one. <laughs> I don't know. He always looks clean, though. So I imagine he has several pairs of overalls. That's my guess. There's uh, some more kitty cat ears. Come on. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he's always worn overalls as much as I know him. Face sticker is so scary. <laughs> I'll try not to take that personally, Jesse. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so actually these two people uh, right here, uh, Brian Chu and Mr. JC John, are sort of responsible for those stickers happening. Uh, JC took the picture, and uh, Brian talked me into making a silly uh, sticker out of it. So. so that's fun. I'm glad that people enjoy those. Ten bucks for a set of three? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, in the U.S., if you're outside the U.S., give me an extra fifty cents or something for a stamp. Uh, but yep, ten bucks for a set of three. You can send it to this uh, this PayPal address. Give me your name and address and what stickers you want, and I will and I will do that. Um, I don't have any more face stickers right now, so if you order that now, I will. It will have to be a while. Um, I gotta get those made. But you know. Take a picture of Jesse to be stickerized? Yes, we need a, we need a Jesse sticker. I wonder if I have a sticker, uh, if I have a picture of Jesse here. Um, <laughs> I like to say, st I like to walk up to Jesse with my camera out and then say something that'll make her scowl at me. Oh, thanks, Becky. Appreciate it. Uh, I will uh, get those out to you. Here's uh... a... <laughs> I, I don't know what I said to Jesse, but Jesse, I'm going to put your, I don't know, Jesse, are you cool with me putting your face out here? I don't, I'm going to make sure before I actually do it. Just missed $9 for a roll of 50 round stickers. Uh, well, the, the, those are different ones. Yeah. The die cuts are definitely cooler. Yeah. The 50 round stickers are pretty cool, but yeah, the other ones are way better. I might get some other ones. Um, you're cool. There you go. <laughs> this is, this is Jesse looking oh, again in front of my face. I don't know what I said to her, but she was like, Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. Uh, Jesse does play, playfully scowl. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what I said to her, but uh, it apparently was the right thing <laughs> to get that face. <laughs> so, and there's, there's Jim kind of laughing about it. So, anyway. Um, yeah, the best part of pen shows are definitely the people. You go for the people, you stay for the pens. Or you go for the pens, and you stay for the people, whatever. But uh, there you go. It's the mom in me. I don't know. I said something. I, I, I was trying to figure out what would make her scowl. I forget what I even said, but it was funny. All right. See you later, V-Rod. Adios, indeed. Yeah, it's 5 o'clock. It's going to be time to shut it all down. Shut it down. Take off my fancy clothes. Put on my PJs. What's the story with the UHU glue stick? Are they available in the U.S. now? I don't know. Let's see what uh, Anna has to say about that. I don't know anything about glue sticks. It turns out V-Rod has uh, his in-laws live in Greensboro. Um, and so next time he comes to town, we're going to get together, get some dinner or something, have some coffee or whatever. Many much scowling. Oh, no. Very minimal scowling. Jesse is, a, Jesse is great to see at shows. PJs by six? Hell yeah, PJs by six. Unless I go get fancy pizza, in which case, 
uh, I will keep my clothes on because I don't like I don't like going into a pizza place wearing pajamas. <laughs> so, time to open your Friday Goulet pin shipment. Get it, Steven? That sounds fun. <laughs> this cat is over here just like purring into my armpit because she's a weirdo. My cats have only just barely forgiven us for leaving them for almost a week. Uh, they were not a big fan of that and of how they did not get pets as much. Um, the kids that come over and play with them and feed them give them some attention, but these are very needy cats. So, I don't know. Anna, you got any uh, information on the UHU glue stick? Keep my clothes on, usually get pizza nude. I don't uh, eat the pizza nude, but uh, I also don't want to pick up the pizza nude. So, I meant my fancy clothes with like pants and a button up shirt and stuff. I have to ship a pin for repairs and was told to hang on to the nib. How do you recommend uh, storing a loose jo uh, Yovo nib unit? Um, I would say put it in any place where it's going to be safe. Um, the way that I store them is I store them in the, the things they come in usually. Um, the other thing that you can do to store them pretty safely is use a, um, a sample vial. Sample vials are also really good for that. This, it says, is a medium metallic. You can actually write what the nib is on the side if you like. So um, this is the way I do it. it. Seems pretty safe. Yep, like that. Ink sample vials. That's the way to do it. Yep. Yep, yep. What's this? Oh, this is the uh, the new way that Franklin Kristoff is sending them. This is a double broad sig. Right there. So, anyway. Pill bottle? Yeah, you got a pill bottle. That'll work, too. But you probably got an ink sample around somewhere, Evan. Just use that. Film canisters? Ain't nobody got film canisters anymore. Woo! Man. I've been wearing a new pair of glasses. Actually, I've had these glasses for a couple of years, but they just don't fit as well as my other one. Got one of those on a broad SIG at BWI. Yeah, there you go. Yep. That's what they've gone to using them now. Broad SIG is still in it. Yeah. Well, use an ink sample vial, man. That'll be good enough. Unless you give it like a real hard shake or smash it or something. It'll be all right. Or just put that broad SIG in something else. But use a black version of those film top uh, sample vials for customers. Ah. Oh, flip top. Yeah, yeah, right. Home canisters, yeah, true. Yep, no cap to keep track of. Yep, that's true. Yeah, those little autoclave uh, vials are pretty good. Pretty good. This cat has decided to curl up now. This is what I'm. This is what I'm dealing with down here. This cat and her cuteness. Terry tot casserole is damn good. All right, remember to salt the tots. Gotta salt them tots. Or you put like a real salty cheese on top of it. Yeah. You just got glasses. Well. Welp. Yep. I see me hold my nose. <laughs> it's, it hurts right here, man. You can probably see the, the dents. These, uh, I left my other glasses in the car. So, you know, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Urgh. Silly cat. Clipsy was my first cat uh, on my own. We decided to adopt her because she was being uh, seriously considered by a very terrible child and his parents. And so uh, Audrey and I ran to the front and we're like, we'll have that cat. Give it to us now. <laughs> and that's why we had Clipsy. Because we couldn't have her going to a terrible, terrible home with a horrible child. I mean, I, I only saw the child in the place. I was like, no, nope, that's a terrible child. You're much happier with us, aren't you? Yes. Hey, happy Friday to you as well. All right, folks, it is, uh, it is 5 p.m. I am going to, uh, to ring off here. Thanks very much for hanging out with me for this last hour. I hope it has been entertaining. Uh, tell a friend about the uh, Ink Dependence YouTube channel. Uh, I don't do ads on my stuff, so I don't think YouTube really spreads the word about Ink Dependence. So tell a friend. It's on you. Because um, I ain't, I ain't going to monetize this thing. Uh, you can hit up the patreon.com slash inkdependence if you want to help support the uh, the channel. You've got this uh, PayPal me. You can send me uh, cash monies for stickers and stuff or just for funsies. Um, or, you know, just enjoy the content and uh, whatever. It's awesome. So thank you very much for hanging out. It's always good to talk to my pen friends. And uh, I will see you all next week. Peace out. Keep the camera going, cat cam. Yeah, but then I couldn't put on my pajamas. So 
There you go. So far. Pizza time. Eventually, yes. All right. Deuces.